Hey everybody, Devin here, and after almost, oof, I want to say maybe two years of not uploading anything on this channel, I finally have a video uh, to upload and talk about today, so that's pretty exciting. So today, I'm going to talk about something that uh, is not very, not something you see very often, and uh, a lot of people, you'd be surprised when people actually want to know how to do this, and actually really like this program and uh, that being Outlook Express. So in this video I'm going to show you how to install Outlook Express on Windows 10, um, Windows 7, and for those who don't know Outlook Express does not work with versions, uh, it was designed for Windows XP but uh, does not work with newer versions of Windows, which disappoints many people because there's many people like me who really don't care for Windows Live and uh, do not care for the layout the way it looks and don't care for any other email program like Thunderbird or anything like that but I prefer rather Outlook Express because of how simple it is and how easy it to use it is. Now a couple things before we get started um, a couple things you want to keep in mind um, now obviously Outlook Express is not designed to run for newer work versions of Windows so you have to keep in mind that there's going to be some things that you're going to run into some issues using this program if you're looking to just send an email or receive an email, you're not going to have any issues, I don't I don't think. But there are going to be some issues um, I think you'll probably run into, and I'll go over a couple of them that I've noticed uh, personally throughout uh, all the operating systems I've tried them on. So personally, uh, I've tested it on Windows 10, Windows 8.1, and Windows 7. I have not tested on Windows Vista yet. Uh, I'm assuming it would work. And obviously XP, which is native, so I don't have to worry about it there. Now, uh, I did not actually modify this program. Uh, the, the person that modified the program, I'll leave a link in the description to. Basically, all I did was create, uh, take the program Outlook Express that he modified and turn it into an installer that makes it easier for you guys to install and use so you guys don't have to think about it so much. And uh, the other videos I've seen about this, uh, there's a program that you have to pay $119 for and you can get Outlook Express on your computer. And that's just plain ridiculous. And honestly, I don't see how that's even legal. They're selling a program that's First of all, it's not even theirs. Microsoft made the program, and I just think it's ridiculous. There, uh, there is another video that's similar to this, but uh, the whole thing is written in Italian, and you know, there's nothing that doesn't <laughs> for people that you know speak English. That's not very uh, helpful for us. So I'm gonna break this video up and how to install on Windows 10, and then I'll move over to a virtual machine. I'll show you how to install on Windows 7. Windows 7, it's a little bit different, and it's a little bit more complicated, unfortunately. But if you're on Windows 10 or 8.1, uh, it's very easy. So if you're on Windows 10 or 8 or 8.1, whatever, you want to download the Outlook installer, uh, Windows 8, Windows 10. And it's pretty simple. You just want to run it. And a couple things I should let you know about is, um, for some reason, Komodo seems to generate a false positive. Um, and I think it's because of the installer that I use. I don't know why. Um, but don't worry about it. There's not any malware or spyware or whatever inside of here. I mean... Obviously, you're taking my word for it, but if I'm, if I'm installing it on my computer right in front of you, then uh, obviously I don't think there's anything on it, but then again, I don't know. You believe what you want to believe. So anyway, it's pretty simple. Um, so this is the guy that made it. And like I said, the only thing that I did was pretty much just take it and uh, turn it into an installer. So if we go over here to Outlook Express, and I was kind of surprised no one actually ever saw this. But anyway, this is uh, how you actually do it, and I just made it easier by creating an installer. But anyway, I'll leave a link to this in the description if you guys want to look at it. If you don't, uh, so anyway, just click next, and then next, and then yes, and then start. And then it'll install. And then I'll run through the uh, this guy's code that I used. And then if you want to, you can look at how the how it works, and he explains it. It's something to do with DLLs or something like that. I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, this is how you actually manually install it. Uh, he has it here. So anyway, uh, I want to click next, and then you're done. So anyway, here it is right here. Create a desktop icon. So when you open it up, this is going to come up. It's going to keep nagging you, and the way you want to fix that is you want to go to properties. Uh, you want to go to compatibility, and you want to uncheck that. And then that'll stop that from coming up. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. It's just if you don't want to have to click yes every time you open it. Um, then I would change that. So here it is. Um, 
another thing you want to know uh, that I want you to know about about this is that um, Windows 10, I mean, all versions of Windows that I've tried this on does not recognize Outlook Express as an email program. So with this being said, uh, you can set it to your default email program, but it won't actually do anything. So if we actually set this, apply, OK, go back in. And as, as you can see, as because I, I came up, you know, it's, it's not going to work. See? So it doesn't recognize this as a default mail program, which would be kind of uh, very irritating because if you go into, for example, Firefox, which I don't have installed on this computer, and you click email link, it won't do anything. Uh, you can you can have it set to open Elk Express from Firefox, but it'll just bring Elk Express up without a compose window, basically without this little window here. Um, some people that may not be a big deal, but um, it's, it definitely can be kind of irritating. Um, but anyway, if, if you're on Windows 10 and Windows 8, that's pretty much it. You just install it and then you set up your account as usual. Um, if you have any way, I guess, that you think you know uh, how to get to the mail to working, and for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, if I go into uh, default programs here, look at, uh, you even have email? Yeah, so we see Google Chrome and I'll express them in here. You could do it by protocol too if you want to. So if we scroll down and look for mail to, it always sees Google Chrome and you can't change it. So that's my point. So if you guys know a way to fix that, or you know if there's a way you guys can, any have any suggestions or anything like that, leave in the video in the comments. And if you guys figure something out, then I'll make a follow-up video on explaining how to do this. So it's kind of basically it's been an ongoing project for me because I spent an entire weekend working on this. So it's pretty it's pretty insane. But anyway, here it is. Um, no need to pay a hundred dollar fee or whatever. But here it is. So now, if you're on Windows Seven or Vista, things are gonna get a little more complicated. Just, just wait. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Uh, this is a Windows Seven virtual machine, and uh, actually, if you guys have noticed, the time has changed since the first part of the video, and there's a reason for that. Um, as I was recording, I noticed some things that weren't working properly, and I kind of made a realization of something. So I ended up discovering that um, having two installers was not necessary. So the final release that you guys will see will be just one installer, as you see here. Um, and that is because the installer, uh, so basically, the Windows 7 is a little bit different than Windows 10 in terms of how it works. So. There's an extra step in Windows 7, Windows Vista, the app perform that you don't have to perform in 10 and 8. So Windows XP has a protected storage, um, some sort of protected storage service that it uses that Outlook saves uh, your email account password in. Now in Windows 7 and Vista, this is read only and you can't touch it, modify or anything like that. So basically the extra step is that we have to modify the service so that way you guys can save your password. Now this isn't required, but if you want to save your password and Outlook, uh, this is a very recommended step because um, otherwise it's extremely irritating, especially if your uh, email account is a two-step account and you have one specific password for Outlook and you have to keep typing that in over and over and over again, that would be extremely irritating. Um, so basically every time you click send and receive, when you first open the program, you'd have to type your password in. And then as soon as you close out of the program, open it back up, you have to do the same thing. And like I said, that'd be extremely irritating if you say, for example, had a password that was a two-step password that's very long and lengthy, as Gmail's usually is. So basically, um, the original, I had, originally I had two installers. I had one that was for Windows 10 and 8, one that was for 7 and Vista. And one that was for 7 and Vista installed the storage patch, but I realized that uh, every time I ran... Uh, the storage patch it didn't actually do anything because of, of the way that the installer was working and it, it just didn't make any sense so finally uh, I just gave in and um, you guys have to download a separate file in order to do this and I'll get into that in a minute so first it's just like Windows uh, 10 you just want to install uh, Outlook as you usually w uh, would and it says it's for Windows 8 and 10 only but obviously I'm going to change that before you guys download it but anyway so you just want to click yes yes install and it'll install. 
Alright, so there we go. Exit, alright, and then here we go, we have Outlook. Alright, so here we are, we have Outlook, and uh, get an account set up real quick. Alright, so I'll just set something up real quick. Copy information from my other outlook over here. <laughs> Just so I can prove my point real quickly here. Alright, so I'll paste that in there. Alright, let's finish this. Alright, so I can just get a connection. So we're good with that. All right. So now I'll do send receive, and it's gonna authorize, and it wants my password. So basically, if you don't patch this, you'll have this issue every single time, where you want to type in the password over and over and over again. And if you notice, uh, if I go into the mail section here, it doesn't remember my password. So what we gotta do to fix this is pretty simple. So down in the description, I'm gonna have a file down below. That you can download and this is a file that was made by again the creator um, which I don't take any credit for making however I did modify it a little bit and I'll show you what I did here in a second to the code and this obviously will be relevant to you if you don't know anything about patch files but um, in the setup file here he had a call command but it wasn't calling it just said call and then take owner dot bat and it, it, sub, it kept saying no file or directory so I added this little line of code here um, to um, basically help CMD find it. So with this being said, when you download this file, it is important, this is a requirement, you must extract the files to your desktop just like you see here. Um, obviously you can change this uh, path, whatever you change this to, then you can extract it to that spot. But if you don't want to deal with that, extract it to your desktop and you won't have uh, this issue. So to run the fix, it's pretty simple. I uh, just want to do a right click on the setup.bat, you want to right click, run as administrator, click yes. And this will pop up if you want to click continue and then that is it and then you want to restart your computer now one thing you want you'll know is that uh, I want you to know is that once this is fixed uh, Outlook is going to take for whatever reason once this is fixed Outlook takes an incredibly long time to open for whatever reason I don't understand why it's just one of the drawbacks but like I said at the beginning of the video there's just things you got to realize that this program was made for this operating system so they're just going to be bound to things that, that you know aren't going to work perfectly um, that's just something you gotta realize here. But uh, anyway, that's just something you wanna have a heads up. It doesn't slow the program down, it just takes forever to open for whatever reason. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna restart and I will be right back. All right, so we are back and let's see what we got. So if you notice, um, if it takes forever to open, uh, that's usually a good sign actually. <laughs> then you know. Um, that it worked. So let's see, and it looks like that might be the case. And I don't know how to fix this, that forever to open issue. I really don't understand why it does this. It's very, very odd. See what I mean? It takes a pretty decent long. I, I don't understand. This, this is one of the drawbacks and unfortunate things about running Windows 7 or Windows Vista when you run the patch. So, I mean, like I said, running the patch isn't required. But, if you, I mean, if you don't mind typing your password every single time, running the patch isn't required, then you don't have to deal with this taking forever to open situation. But, if you don't have to keep typing your password, that's something... Uh, 
you'd have to deal with and run the patch. Uh, one thing you could do is you can have Outlook Express. Uh, you can put it in your startup folder so that way when you turn on your computer, it's already opening up. So then when you open up your computer, once it finally opens, you can have it minimized. Um, then you don't have to close out of it and uh, you can use it that way. Like I said, it, it, it takes an insanely long time. And just in case you guys don't think it's running, it is. It's right there. So it will open eventually, I promise. It, it's ridiculously slow. I don't understand. This is one of the drawbacks and unfortunate things uh, if you run the patch, but it'll save your password. Um, and maybe it'll speed up over time. I really don't know. I have, oh, There it goes, finally. So uh, I don't know. You just got to be patient. Alright, so it's going to ask my password one more time. Alright, now if we go in and look at accounts, you will see that my password has been saved. So that's really it, guys. Um, as you can see, if I, I can send a test email to myself. Test email to myself. It goes outbook, outbox. It goes under. Oh, what's that? So if I do a send or receive, connected. It's gonna check, and there I am. So anyway, that is how you install Outlook Express, uh, Windows 7 and Windows 10. Uh, obviously, on Windows 10, it's a little bit easier. All you do is install it. You don't have to run the patch because it just, as you can see here, it just. Uh, Remembers your password, so you don't have to worry about it. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, please uh, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to help you out any way I can if you guys are having any issues. And uh, again, if uh, anybody has any idea about the whole 